Hello, I'm Chris Menard. I got a lot of Zoom questions about the registration feature for meetings. So let me show you how this works. So I'm going to pop up my list of questions that I have, and I've actually thought of a couple more that I've been asked since then. So question number one, can I use Zoom's registration with a free Zoom account? The answer to that question is no. Question number two is why would I even use registration for a meeting? Because usually registration is used with a Zoom webinar, but you may want to use it for a meeting, one, because when you do polling and you have registration turned on, you'll know the names and the emails of the results from the poll when you run your poll report. Another reason is maybe your meeting, you would like to know, did anyone even sign up for this meeting? Registration will let you know that. So let's go ahead now and let me show you how to set up registration and when I show you how to set it up, I'll answer these other questions. So for how do I set up registration? I love the Zoom app that I have on my desktop computer, but you cannot set up registration from the Zoom app. You've got to do it from the website. So I've already signed in. As we've discussed, it doesn't work with the paid account, so I'm in my licensed account. Go to meetings and click on schedule a meeting. I'm making this up. We're having an HR meeting. Hey, let's make it this benefits meeting. This is, by the way, this may be a good example to find out is anyone going to sign up? And if they don't sign up, maybe a day or two before, cancel the meeting instead of having to do a whole lot of work for no one to sign up for your meeting or no one to show up for your meeting. I'm going to take the defaults here just to keep this simple, but here is registration required. I'll go ahead and answer another question right here. So again, this is only on the web. The question I also get is, can I require registration and use my personal meeting ID, PMI? The answer is no. Watch this. Registration just got turned off, so I'm going to turn it back on and it goes back to generate automatically. It's up to you which one of these three options you're going to require, but you, as you know, you got to do one. I'm just going to do the waiting room. Uh, I don't care when people join to keep this simple. Another question is, okay, I said there's going to be registration required. Well, where is the registration information? You don't get that until you save this meeting. So when I hit save down below here now will be registration. Let's just see that. Registration, email settings, branding, poll, and live meetings or live streaming. That's all part of the registration. I'm on registration now. Let's go talk about a couple features here. Let me go ahead and answer a couple more questions. Can I use registration? The answer is no with your PMI. Can someone register after the meeting starts? I'm going to go ahead and check that off. The answer is yes. But let me show it to you because people get confused about this one. Registration, I'm going to select edit over here to the right. And this is actually registration options. You can decide whether people are automatically approved or manually. I'll come back to that one. But the question was, can people register after the event? So by checking close registration after event date, I'm going to get real specific. If my event is on August 20th, starting at 3 p.m., and it runs, I've got it scheduled from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., someone can still sign up on that date at 3.20 p.m. So between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m., that meeting's still going on, people can still sign up even though I've checked this box here. This only keeps them from signing up after the meeting is completely over, just so you know that. So I'm still going to check that box. A tip, I'm not covering this today. Again, usually registration is done with webinars, but if you're doing one with a meeting, I would probably turn that one off for meetings for sure. You don't want people sharing this on social media. Do you want people to be automatically approved or manually approved? I'll come back and discuss this. Let's go look at some of those questions we had. Um, what are the required questions and can I add other questions? This is number eight and nine on my screen here. So when you go to questions, what is required is email 
and what is required is first name. Notice that last name is checked, but I can turn that off. I do want to require last name, though, in this example. Other fields you have, I do want to know someone's, I'm making this up, city and state, but I'm not going to make those required. I'm about to show you this registration form. City and state, not zip code. There we go. And I like this one right here. So if people are registering for my meeting, maybe they want to ask me some questions before the thing even starts. So I'm going to leave this one turned on, questions and comments. But again, it's not required. So we should end up with three required fields, first name, last name, and email. And then we should end up with three optional fields, city, state, and questions and comments. I'm going to do a save all up here. And by the way, you can make your own custom questions. I'm not headed there today, though. So now I've got this set up. Automatically approved is turned on. You can come over here to email. I didn't ask this in my questions, but when do people get the email? When they're approved. So with automatic approval, they'll get the email immediately. With manual registration approval, they would only get the email when I manually come in here, look at their email, and hit approve. I'm going to just do automatic for right now and hit save all again. Let me go back to my list of questions. So what are the required questions? We got it, email and first name. Can I add other required questions? Yes, and again, you can add optional questions. How can I test the registration? Let's go ahead and do that one right here, the last one. So. If you notice, with registration, I've got the registration link sitting right here. I'm going to just right click and copy it. This is just me. I like to go to incognito window and see how this works. I'm going to paste it and I'm going to quickly fill this out. Benefits meeting. I am making up stuff here. Are you covering? our new HSA. I'm making this up. Uh, so here we go. If you recall, there's either automatic approval or manual approval. I had automatic selected. So when I hit register, the meeting link will pop in here immediately. Carol will get an email because again, it's automatic right here. There you go. Let me go to this question now. So can you test registration? Yes, that was testing it. One more thing about testing it. Scroll down, do a quick refresh. Registrants one, automatic approval. Go hit view and I can see here is Carol Martin. If I had done manual, I would have to come in here, look at Carol, click and hit approve. I can also click on Carol's name to see what she put in in her registration fields. I could also cancel Carol's registration if I wanted to. So there's the approval stage. Back to our questions. Can someone that did not register join my meeting? The answer is yes and no. The answer, the official answer is no. Because I tested this. Remember that meeting I said on August 20th from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m.? If I pop into that meeting with the meeting ID, and the meeting URL and the meeting password or whatever I need, it made me register. So these two questions somewhat tie together. So the answer is, can someone that did not register join my meeting? No, you got to register. But remember Carol just signed up, and again, I'm not going to show it to you, but she did get an email. There is nothing to keep Carol from forwarding that email to someone else, and then that person joining. But when they join, they appear to be joining as Carol is what I tested. And I even tested it again. Carol popped into the meeting once officially as Carol. And then when she sent the email, the other person joined and that person came in as Carol too. What I would suggest is if you're worried about people popping into your meeting or sharing your meeting invite, do a manual registration for your meeting. After they sign up, before you approve them, you've got their emails. Send them an email and tell them, please do not share this invite link. 
And you can even come in here, I thought about this, you can even come in here to your email settings. This will send you a preview of how it looks, by the way. So if I go and check my email, I'll see that. But I can come in here and edit this. You don't have a lot of fields to edit, but here you go. I am making this up. Please do not share the meeting invite link. You got another field down here to type. I'm going to hit save. One more preview real quick and I'll show you this one. So let me swap over to my Gmail real quick. There was the original, and then here is the other one down below. You know how Gmail works, it's cutting stuff off, but there you go. So again, what I recommend is if you really wanna make sure people don't share it, do the manual and send them an email in between. I hope that answered all your questions about registration for meetings, and there's obviously a registration report you can run to. I appreciate your time. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. Um, got a lot of Zoom videos, have a Zoom resource center also. If you have any questions about Zoom, let me know. Have a great day. I appreciate it. Thank you.